Looks like it's going to be a nail biter for the Dow. You can see the two other major indices, though, are already up. The Dow, of course, closed open rather down more than 200 points. However, of course, folks, it's important to remember this is only day three of the new year. I want to bring in Courtney Dominguez, a Payne Capital Senior Wealth Advisor, and I'm not affiliated with the group. Courtney, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All right, let's talk about this this market and the uh, challenges for 2020. Yeah. Uh, not the, the, the news right now, notwithstanding, coming into the year, what was your overall investment thesis? I'm really optimistic where the markets are heading next year. I think the economy has been on good footing, which we've been talking about over the last several months, and I think it still is on good footing. And when you look at, historically speaking, when you have a really strong year where the markets are up over 20%, the odds are in your favor that the next year the markets are going to be positive. Like 83% of the time, the S&P 500 is in positive territory after it just finished a 20% year. And on average, it's up about 11%. What, what, what accounts for that? Is it uh, success begat success? I mean, we know it was late in the year when these big-time money managers finally started putting money to work. Yeah. Uh, ironically, if you look at individual investors, their sentiment actually went down. It, it, went, it got less bullish in the last week of the year, which I found intriguing. But is it just sort of the thing, if you've been on the sidelines, you've got to get in at some point? Yeah, I think you're going to see that. There's a lot of cash on the sidelines. A lot of your big institutional investors have been way too cautious. And so they finally need to get in because they need to make their investors happy. But I think regardless, the economy has been on solid footing. And I think it's actually a positive thing that maybe people have been nervous and keeping cash on the sidelines because that means there's still more room to grow. You're not seeing this euphoria, which is what you see when the markets are hitting a top. Right, right. And I'm, I'm with you there. We're nowhere near euphoria. Uh, I guess one of the things, though, that bugs some people who even long the market uh, is that the earnings weren't there in, mm -hmm. 20, in 2019. Yeah. And that the assumption for 10 percent earnings growth would justify this rally. But it, that's a big jump. Uh, how do you see the earnings picture play out? Yeah, and things have gotten more expensive because you're seeing prices getting more expensive. Earnings aren't quite catching up. But yeah, the consensus is earnings should catch up this year. And if we see that, that's definitely going to be positive for the stock markets. We also have a really accommodative Fed, which is going to help the stock markets. And I think chances are they will keep rates low next year, especially as we're going into an election. Do they, do they have to cut rates in your mind or do they just not have to raise them? I, I, oh, and we should also point out they yeah. are doing quantitative. In other words, they're buying, they are pushing money into the system in different yep. ways. Exactly. Yeah, I don't necessarily see them needing to cut. I think, if anything, we're starting to see wages rise. I think, if anything, you could see inflation rise and potentially them going up. I think that's much more feasible than rates getting cut next year. Really? So this year, you think that, that we – where is wage growth? Because January 3rd last year, uh, Powell, he made the epiphany, I think, that sparked this rally, saying mm -hmm. wage, wage inflation is not price inflation. Is there a specific number that you start to get worried about? Yeah, I think we're just really starting to see the labor market tighten. And as that's going to tighten, we are starting to see kind of inklings of those wages going up in the future. So has it happened? Not yet. But I do think it's it's more feasible than interest rates going down next year, I would argue. So so uh, bonds have come down, yields have come down. But mm -hmm. when they were going up, the 10-year was near 2%. People said it could give competition to stocks. Where, yeah. where, if you're looking for yield, where should you be? What do you think you should be right now? Yeah, and if we're looking for yield right now, we were talking about this earlier. I actually think the energy sector is a really good play right now. Um, just generally speaking, I think we need some energy infrastructure here in the in the country, and energy demand should go up. But if anything, with all this happening in Iran right now, that's putting more pressure on energy prices right now. And it's one of your highest income-generating investments when you look at the stock markets right You're now. You're not concerned, though, that it's been such an underperformer for so long? Energy I'm not. I think that's actually probably more of a reason that we should get back into it because I think long term it still has a lot of potential. All right. Courtney Dominguez, it's been too long. Happy New Year again. Happy New Year.